Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is a netbook, a fairly old netbook that came out in 2008. It's an Asus EPC-1000H, one of the first 10-inch netbooks available, and it has a 1.6 gigahertz Intel Atom N270 single-core processor. It's not very powerful, but uh, even this older netbook is able to run Windows 8 Consumer Preview, which was uh, recently released, and I wanted to just sort of show you how that works. I went ahead and installed it, and out of the box, it's interesting because um, although everything sort of looks pretty good here, on the home screen, the uh, certain apps are not going to run immediately because it says the screen resolution is not high enough. Now this has a native 1024 by 600 pixel resolution display, but out of the box the uh, computer seems to think that it has an 800 by 600 pixel display. Uh, I went ahead and installed a uh, graphics driver designed for Windows 7 and it works fine with Windows 8 and lets me change the resolution. So let me show you real quickly how to do that here. Um, you can find the link for the updated graphics driver at lilliputing.com. Now from here you can see that it says 800 by 600, but you can also then change it to 1024 by 600, 1024 by 768, which I'll recommend for uh, a reason I'll tell you in a minute, and 1152 by 864. Now two of those are actually higher than the native screen resolution, and so you're going to wind up with some funny looking pixels. Not everything's going to work great, but, um, but it should be able to use certain Windows features. Now some Windows features, Windows 8 features, require 1366 by 768 pixels or or higher, and that's just not going to work on this device. But overall, let's go ahead and switch to 1024 by 768. Say apply. Now an interesting thing happens when you do that, if you say you want to keep the changes, now it won't even let you go back to 1024 by 600. Uh, there's a way to get there though. You can go to advanced settings, choose the Intel graphics accelerator, uh, media accelerator driver, and click on graphics properties. It's kind of a lot to remember, but then you can go in here and change the resolution to 1024 by 600, which is native. Uh, but the reason we're sticking with 1024 by 768 right now is because the only way to access the Windows Store is with 1024 by 768 or higher. Um, you can see that even though it's called a consumer preview, the desktop background is a beta. That's something that Microsoft did with Windows uh, 7 as well. They had sort of a beta fish background. This one's a little bit blockier, a little bit more sort of uh, cartoony, but it's, it's kind of a cute fish. Uh, down here in the side you'll notice that there's icons for Internet Explorer and uh, Windows Explorer, but there's no start menu. You can get the start button though by just sort of scrolling over into the left corner and clicking and it'll bring up the start page or the start screen. There is no more sort of a list of programs available in a, in a pop-up menu. This is basically the start menu. In order to access uh, certain settings and other things, you can um, oops, pull up the uh, charms here on the side. And we can go to settings that way, or view devices, or go back to the start menu. And to do that, you would do start button plus C. And these charms will actually show up in all sorts of different applications. So anyways, real quick, I'll show you that now I can use the Metro version of Internet Explorer. Um, and you can see this is the version that has sort of a little bar here at the bottom, but nothing around the sides, really. So if we want to do a little web surfing, We can do that in the full screen mode here. And again, we can do Windows plus C to bring up the charms, and we can do share button, settings, and so forth, or we can go back to the start menu from here. Now, you can also use the desktop version of Internet Explorer, which is looks more like the uh, old-fashioned version, or you can install other web browsers if you like. Let's go ahead and pull up the Windows Store here. And again, this is an application that requires 1024 by 768 or higher, or it's not going to work. And uh, so now we have access to the Windows Store, and we can scroll through here from the bottom. So again, you know, this is, uh, it looks like a user interface that's really designed for touch screens, but it does work with a keyboard and mouse or with a touchpad. So let's go ahead and uh, download an application here. And it looks like it should be installed. So let's go back to the start screen. 
and now it still actually says it's installing. So these tiles show live, constantly updated information. So for instance, it's showing that the uh, USA Today application is still installing. But when I go ahead and tap it, we get a splash screen, and a full screen application should pop up any moment now. Little like uh, notification saying that the app has been installed. It's interesting. So it let, let us load it, but it didn't load fully. So let's go ahead and try it again now. And here's the uh, Metro UI version of the USA Today app. Now there's also uh, some applications we've seen before, like a weather application. I'm not sure if this knows my location. There's a music application, which is tied to Xbox Live Maps. Clearly I haven't actually uh, bothered to load many of these so we sort of have to wait for them to get going. Um, but then I can show you at the same time, here we go, so we've got the Maps application. Let's look for New York City. And it zooms into New York there. Um, so again, we can bring up from anything here, Windows plus C brings up the Charms menu, or we can bring up a list by doing um, Windows button plus tab of currently running applications here in the side. And so we can switch to the store, or scroll through, go to the desktop, start menu, and so forth. You can also, of course, do an alt tab to switch between running applications using sort of the old fashioned alt tab interface. But uh, Windows tab now gives you the sidebar that shows you currently running applications. and it thinks I'm in Seattle, which I'm not. So anyways, that's a quick look at Windows 8 Consumer Preview running on a netbook. Um, everything seems to be pretty snappy. It's uh, pretty easy to customize and set up. The only thing that you really need to do if you're running on a device with a 1024 by 600 pixel um, display is go ahead and make sure that you've got the latest graphics drivers that let you pretend that you've got a higher resolution screen if you want to be able to access the uh, Windows Store and other features. Um, Basic features, though, you can just sort of use the, the default Windows 7-like desktop experience here. Um, use the new app launcher, but run applications such as Windows Explorer and Internet Explorer, uh, or go ahead and install third-party applications, Google Chrome or Firefox and so forth. Um, so there you go. That's a quick look at Windows 8 Consumer Preview on an Asus EPC-1000H netbook. Should have a similar experience on most older netbooks. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.